A treasure trove of antique sewing machines dating back to the 1800s. Adorned with mother of pearl and gold leaf, these timeless relics stitched together our past. This is an incredibly cool machine. It's uh, circa 1898. Mike Anderson shows off one of his most valuable vintage sewing machines known as the clown. And when you crank it, the clown's head bobs and the arm goes up and down. It's just an excellent condition and exceedingly rare. That's the common thread in Mike's extensive sewing machine collection. This is a uh, 1874 Singer Model 12. There were not very many of them made because you had to be wealthy to afford them. If you hold it in different lights, you can see that the mother of pearl turns different colors. Mike scours the country for these cast iron heirlooms. His specialty, early American sewing machines. From the days after Elias Howe first invented the machine in the 1840s to the 1890s. I love these machines but I don't collect them. His company, Wolfgang's Collectibles out of Wakefield, buys and sells sewing machines, a career Mike stumbled upon 25 years ago after losing his job at a New Hampshire record company. He and his wife, Kelly, started an antiques business, eventually focusing solely on vintage sewing machines when he picked up three at auction. Paid $10 for three, sold one of them for 400, and I thought, I'm off to the races. Now now I can, I can make a living. Mike hunted down machines at auctions, antique stores, yard sales, and flea markets, gaining a reputation as fair and honest. When he spotted this rare singer featherweight at a church sale, he argued with a seller. And the lady at the church sale said $10. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, I'll give you 400. And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, I would not feel right walking out of here for $10 with that machine because it's worth so much more money. He sold it for 600. Nowadays, the machines find him. My phone rings almost every day with somebody who's got an antique sewing machine because they've heard about me and, and they want to know if I want to buy it. Sometimes they're in terrible condition, gathering dust and moisture in a barn, an attic, or a basement. Rusty, dirty, and they don't work. Originally, Mike handled the reconditioning, but Kelly took over as the fixer-upper. Her mastery makes machines sing again. I don't do any restoration. I consider what I do conservation. All the parts and every thread of every screw cleaned. I take everything back to raw, unpolished steel, and then I polish it all back to where it would have been when it came uh, from the factory. The fancy flowers on this 1863 Folsom muted and dull. Kelly will make them bloom. Just very gently. I don't ever uh, correct paint. For me, the value of a machine is in the original finish. After the overhaul, good is new. Should last another 150 years. It really is very satisfying to take something that has such a proud heritage and such a history and you take it from you know this poor sad rusted abused neglected little thing into something that's ready to go back to work it literally gives me goosebumps when kelly finishes a machine it's a work of art Since 2001, Mike and Kelly have sold 54,000 machines, the most expensive, 30 grand, an entire collection, six figures. These toy sewing machines, cute as a button, this red K&E from the 1930s. Real working toy sewing machine made so that a little girl could uh, sit down and sew with mom. The holy grail of antique sewing machines, this singer Turtleback, Mike's had two over the years. There are fewer than 10 known in the world. It was Singer's first machine for home use, but it didn't sew well. Embarrassed, Isaac Singer offered to buy them back. When Singer got the machines back, he had them smashed in a New York City dump with the sledgehammers, and then he took all the cast iron and melted it down to make his new machine the Singer Letter A. Early sewing machines were powered either by a foot-operated treadle or a hand crank, which I try out on this highly decorated 1913 New National made in Orange, Massachusetts. 
Just the touch transports you to a bygone age, a connection to the many hands that worked these machines, setting in motion an industrial and social revolution.